TLC, it's time for the Family Feud. Introducing the Mandrell family. Mary Mandrell, Irby Mandrell, Erlene Mandrell, Louise Mandrell, and Barbara Mandrell. On your mark. Battling for the first Family Feud Country Western Championship. Introducing the Stadler Brothers. Harold Reed, Jimmy Fortune, Don Reed, Bill Balsey, and their special guest, Brenda Lee. Ready for action. From Nashville, Tennessee, home of Upland, USA, get ready for a special week of family feud. I've never seen two families more competitive about having the chance to play for up to $20,000 for their great charity. Who will play for that charity? We're going to find out. And how large is that bank when we play the bullseye game? Come on, Barbara. Right First, I want to thank both families for being on the show and want you to know that you're going to play for a great charity. Barbara, would you mind telling us the charity your family selected? I would appreciate doing that. It's the Vanderbilt Organ Transplantation Center. The Vanderbilt Organ Transplantation Center. Not enough recognition of the importance of donating those organs. A great charity. And Harold, your family would like to play for? The Midwest, the 1993 uh, Midwest Flood Victims. Excellent. Two great charities. Makes me feel excited to put $5,000 into the banks of both families, that is the least you can play for. Now, can you take that bank to $20,000? It's up to you now. Each question adds the value of your bank. If you have the number, one answer. This question is worth $1,000. Let's see who has the quickest hand. We ask 100 people this, and it is worth a grand. It's multiple choice, so listen carefully. Which event made you feel most like an adult? Driving, drinking, or voting? You have control, Barbara. Driving. Is driving the bullseye? Bullseye! Right on target! You go back in $6,000 going into the bank of the Mandrell family. Come on up here, Louise. All right, Jimmy, are you ready? I think so. 2,000. You know what? It's the first time I've ever been on the show that I'm taller than both contestants. <laughs> Jimmy, I love you, Dad. I love you, too. Daddy sang bass. <laughs> Raymond sang tenor. Here we go. This question is worth $2,000 to your bank. It's multiple choice as well. Are you more likely to daydream about sex, romance, or food? Jimmy? Sex. <laughs> Carol say, when you're little like us, you got a daydream. Let's see if it hit the bullseye. No. All right, Louise, are you more likely to daydream about sex, romance, or food? 100 average Americans. <laughs> Quickly. Food. She says, she said it in time, is food the bullseye? You see? When you're a celebrity, you might have food, and maybe you're married and you're having sex, but what, what was it that the survey said was number one? Romance! No one said. All right, you're going to go back with your families right now, and here we go. Come on. Come on up here, Brenda. Thank you so much for standing in with the Statler. Erlene, you understand it? Romance. She says romance. That was the last question. Okay. <laughs> You couldn't be that blonde. Here we go. We ask 100 people this, worth $3,000. Tell me a song title with the word blue in it. Early. Blue suede shoes. Is blue suede shoes number one? No. All 
right, Brenda, tell me a song title with the word blue in it. Blue Velvet. Is Blue Velvet the $3,000 answer? Oh. What could it be? Blue? Blue Moon would have given you $3,000. A lot of great songs. Here we go. Come on up here, Irving. Let's go right now. Here we go, Don. This question could add $4,000 to your great banks. Name an occupation where a person with very little education can be highly successful. Irby. Farmer. How about a farmer? <laughs> Not there. An occupation where a person with very little education can be highly successful. That's easy. Entertainer. Work for me. <laughs> Not there. What was the $4,000 bullseye answer? Salesman. We're going to send you back. We missed that, and we come with our final bank building question. Mary, lovely family. Phil, it's a pleasure. One of the families can round out their banks with another $5,000 if you hit the bullseye with the number one answer to this. Listen carefully. Name something you hire someone to pay for you. Phil. Your house. Is house the $5,000 bullseye? Bullseye! And the Snappers built a $10,000 bank. The Mandrells had $6,000. And we're coming right back to play the feud. Because you got to win the feud if you fast money. More feuds back coming right up to the USA. Got to win the feud, get to 300 first, you're playing fast money. We ask 100 people this question. The top five answers are on that board. Give me the most popular answer. This is a good question. Tell me a way you can tell someone really tied one on the night before. Barbara? Bloodshot eyes. Show me bloodshot eyes. Bam! Number one. Think of the steal. Do that again, Barbara. Give him some of that. <laughs> Now, now, not that the Mandrells would know this. That's what's going to make it so hard. But you probably ran That's into someone. Harold's ready. <laughs> Just take a look at Harold. <laughs> How can you tell someone really tied one on the night before? Oh, goodness. Uh, I'm going to say uh, they look tired. They look tired. I bet it's number four. Let me see. Bam, I was right. Look at Harold. <laughs> What was that said again? I look, keep looking at Harold. Just look at Harold. <laughs> tell me, a, Harold, they're making this up. As, <laughs> tell me a way you can tell someone really tied one on the night before. Well, it's kind of like morning sickness, but it's not. They're like throwing up and uh, you, whatever. They're sick. You know, Erlene, okay. I think you are that blonde. I'll tell you, I love you. Let me see. It's they kind of have. Well, if you really tied one on, you don't get the morning sickness for about four weeks after, after you really tied one on. Let me see. Kind of morning sickness. Sick in the stomach. Come on, Papa. What a brood you got. Headache. Headache. Let me see it. A headache. Bam! Clean sweep. Come on, Mary. Hi. How can you tell someone tied one on the night before? He took my answer, but I'm going to say they don't walk. Good. They, they don't walk, walk good. No, they, they don't walk straight. I got a feeling that my two-year-old's been drinking then. <laughs> they don't walk good. <laughs> All right, one strike. Barbara, mm. how can you tell someone really tied one on the night before? The, the, the bloodshot eyes, the headaches, circles, sickness. That's take all three of it, seconds, isn't it? take a guess. Okay, um, they, they say I'm sick. They say... They just say, I tied one on the night before. Let me see it. Not there, and that's two strikes. Think of a steal because you could have the points that are on that board. Could what do you, you say? move? I can't see Harold. <laughs> are you okay? A way you can tell someone really tied one on the night before. Uh, Three seconds. Sleepy and drowsy. They are sleepy and drowsy. Is it the remaining? Sounded like two of the seven dwarfs. Here we go. Help them out, Phil, with one answer. How can you tell someone really tied one on the night before? Bad breath. Bad breath. Oh, uh, overslept. They overslept. 
Bad breath. Bad breath, overslept? Bad breath. Bad breath, over... Maybe they just have bad breath because they overslept, but it's up to you, Harold. I mean, tell him what you really want him to say. I don't care. I'm going to say bad breath. If bad breath is number three, you have stolen the bank from the Mandrells. Is it bad breath? Harold Newman! How do you pick your favorite game shows? Classic or crazy? Go to gsn.com to vote for your favorite game shows. Then tune in to your picks on the Viewer's Choice Marathon. Friday, November 23rd, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Good luck. The top five answers are on the board. We ask 100 average Americans, and this is a great question. Tell me a career that makes getting to heaven a long shot. Louise? A lawyer. Let me see. Lawyers. There it is. Two or more popular. A career that makes getting to heaven a long shot. Uh, entertainer. <laughs> An entertainer? <laughs> Boo, go back, Jimmy. Think of a steal. Mandrells, don't build a large bank for them again. Irene? Irene. I'm, I'm sorry, Irene. I'm sorry. It's just that I have a hard time looking away from your face. Just Keep looking, I think. Okay. A career that makes getting to heaven a long shot. Um, a strip dancer. <laughs> Show me a strip dancer. Aww. Didn't I? No. Well, no, because they're coming straight in. Come on in. Because in heaven, we're not wearing clothes anyway. It's not a big deal. Irby? Professional criminal. A professional criminal as opposed to an amateur criminal. Right. Amateur and get forgiveness, but a professional can't. I see the point. Let me see a professional criminal. Oh, oh, there it is, number one. I'm moving. Thank you. Irby, you're lucky. I thought the judge was going to say lawyer was already up there. Mary? I have it. What is it? Politician. A politician. Bam! What's the long shot to get to heaven, Barbara? What career? What would 100 people say today? Um... I would think a banker. A banker? It better be up there. Show it to me. Two strikes, you could steal a real large bank. What do you say? Louise? Um, Wait, three seconds. Um, I can't think of a guy. It's okay. That's three strikes. You can steal some points, and I don't know how many. It's a career that makes a career getting into heaven a long shot. Gambler. Gambler? Prostitute. Prostitute? Used car salesman. Used car salesman? <laughs> Prostitute. <laughs> Prostitute, used car salesman, gambler. Now, Harold, listen to me. Big steal, I'm moving quickly. We ask 100 average people, and it could surprise you. What's a career that makes getting into heaven a long shot these days? Prostitute. Let me see prostitute. Bam! Who knows? Who knows? And number five, you can't get into heaven if you are possibly... A TV evangelist. And all I want to say is there's about three of them that ain't going to make it. Let's go right now. Time for our final good Let's go. We're going to pick up the pace as we triple this point value. Either team can win. Brenda Lee, you can use either hand you want. Slap it with any body part you feel, as long as you do it first. Top five answers there. Listen carefully as we move. Tell me something that a short person might have difficulty doing with a tall person. Brenda. Dancing. Dancing. Number one, think of the steal. Here we go. You're going to play for $10,000 if you take it all the way out, Don. Yes. Short person might have difficulty doing with a tall person. Kissing. Kissing. There it is. Bill. Playing basketball. Bill looked at me and went, playing basketball. Good answer. There it is. Harold? Walking. Walking with a tall person. Is it there? No. Strike number one. Short person might have difficulty doing with a tall person. You ought to know. Hit it. Yeah, I know. Y'all set them all. 
Um, Take a guess. Jimmy Fortune says... Running. Running. I don't Let me see. Running. <laughs> you can steal a big bank over there if Brenda Lee doesn't know. Nate, uh, something that a short person might have difficulty doing with a tall person. Um, helping them dress. <laughs> well, I... Let me just go over here now <laughs> for the steal. She said helping them dress. <laughs> if you don't know this, they have won the game. Something a short person might have to... Huh? What? Making out. Making out. Oh, <laughs> Irby? Nothing? <laughs> lifting. Lifting. Taking a picture. Taking their picture, making out, no, lifting. taking a picture together. Taking a picture together. I, I go with my mom and she found a nice way to say it. But you better out. say it more clearly. Making out is good enough? Yes. Well, the second and the first husband were what you think? No. Oh, you guys, that's not what good. What are you going to say, Barbara? Not, oh. you got three seconds. I, I'm taking a picture. Quickly, uh, one. Uh, boxing. Uh, fi oh, fighting. No. Fighting. Oh. She said boxing. Oh, no. <laughs> the way I make love, it's the same thing. Let me see. Boxing for the steal. The game is over in the seventh of the Make it out. You said something else. Number four would have kept you in the game. Having said, we have not stopped here to give it to all I can say. Make it whoopy. Number five. Talking. I want to say stay right here. You did a great job. But right now, for $10,000, I need to establish who's first. Who's first? Take that. Harold and me. Come on right now. We're playing for the business. We love it. You both bring it. Harold, you're on stage. We're coming right back. We play Fast Money from Oxford Land, USA. Right now. Fifteen seconds on that clock. Good luck. We ask a hundred people these five questions. Tell me a kind of place where people avoid sitting in the front row. Movie theater. At what age did you leave home for good? Sixteen. Something women do before a date. Uh, get dressed up. Something that you spend money on at a fair. Uh, food. The most ticklish spot on your body. Ribs. Turn around, that's five. Place where people avoid sitting in the front row, you thought? Movie theater survey thought? 34! Excellent, excellent. At what age did you leave home for good? You said? 16. Too early. And when, every time I left home, my parents said good. Survey set? Zero women do before a date, you said? Dress up, survey said? Four. Something that you spend money on at the fair. How'd you do with? Food. Our survey said 53! Oh, the most typical spot on your body you chose. The ribs. Coo. Yes, she is. And the survey said 18, doll. Back with your teammates. Here it comes. Harold Reed to bring it home. 91, Harold. <laughs> with 20 seconds on that clock. Revealing your partner's answers. You bring it home, brother. We ask a hundred people. All right. Tell me a kind of place where people avoid sitting in the front row. Church. At what age did you leave home for good? Eighteen. Something women do before a date. Uh, lipstick. Something that you spend money on at a fair. A hot dog. Try again. A uh, popcorn. All food and drinks have been given. Uh, Quickly. Gee, uh, the axe. The most ticklish spot on your body. He said the acts, meaning the performers or shows. Does he get the fifth question? Fifth question, the most picklish spot on your body. Uh, under your arms. Turn around here. Kind of place where you avoid sitting in the front row. You said? Church. Our survey said? Bang! The number one answer, church. You leave home for good, you said it. 18 survey said? 16. 18. 21 would have been number one. Women do before a date. You said? They put on lipstick. Did 28 people say it for 10 grand? What did the survey say? Bam!
Meet Rayburn's 11. Woolery. <laughs> Eubanks. Paul. London. Dawson. Perry. Combs. Conby. Tamarkin. Trebek. And Rayburn, the ringleader. Weekday starting at 9, 8 central on GSN.